Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Monday, the uh, 27th of March. I had to check it there just to uh, make sure. Uh, I'm Derek Clark, as ever. I'm delighted to say we're joined at the start of the week by Stevie Clifford. How are we doing, Stevie? Hi, mate. Um, morning, everyone. Um, it's a brighter day today, Derek. It's quite right. um, blue skies, it's quite crisp, so an enjoyable dog walk this morning after a day. Uh, escorted the children to school so all good yeah absolutely of course uh the clocks went forward didn't they on saturday night so uh later nights uh, are upon us so uh yeah a uh, long time coming that's for sure um let's talk yeah uh, before we talk things uh rangers folks uh just talk about housekeeping as ever you can see the little ticker below you can subscribe to the rangers review now for just one pound for three months worth of content go and head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details just two pounds 99 per month thereafter it's an absolute bargain even at that price uh, you can subscribe to our youtube channel where we're closing in on twelve thousand subscribers now uh so all your support is greatly appreciated uh, and a quick word as well to our podcast sponsors seneca hair restoration if you're not aware of these guys uh, if you're thinking about a hair transplant folks or uh, perhaps uh, restoring some lost self-confidence, then these are the guys uh, to go to. And as ever, I've bunked the, the links in the description box. So do go check them out if that is something you are thinking of. Um, right, Stevie, um, we weren't at the, the Legends game yesterday, but uh, the heroes from yesteryear uh, turned out at Ibrox. Uh, healthy crowd as well, around about 25,000, I think, was uh, was recorded there as a... a a world eleven beat the uh, Rangers eleven by four goals to three. Um, it was good to see uh, a number of players heading back to Ibrox. Jermaine Defoe be, being one of them. Um, he said he, he finally got the chance to say a proper farewell to the Rangers support. Scored two goals uh, as well. Still got it uh, as Jermaine. Uh, he told uh, Rangers TV, "I was looking forward to the game. I'm so grateful I had the chance to play at this amazing football club. It's a great day for the fans and an amazing turnout. I really enjoyed it. I didn't have a chance to say goodbye when I." left that's why I was thinking about when I get the chance to come back and say goodbye properly so when Boydie messaged me to ask if I wanted to play then it was 100% everyone knows what this club means to me uh, to come back and score is really special the players have come up and played for them as well which is great and he says it's so special to get 30,000 in the stadium for a game like this is amazing but I can't say I'm surprised the support is special there's not many clubs like this Legends of the game, of course, we know uh, Stevie Germain Defoe, but it's always nice to hear ex-players uh, talk about the club like that. And um, yesterday, I've seen, seen the highlights of it. He's still got it. Yeah, I mean, look, Germain Defoe was some finisher, wasn't he? Um, a fantastic player to get him up here and to sign was a really um, big thing for us. And, you know, he played a vital part in, in returning the title. He was the kind of player, actually, we probably need right now. So. Mm -hmm. um, just a, a wonderful footballer, but yeah, I mean, you've seen it yesterday. These guys, they might lose their, their fitness or they might lose their quick um, kind of step or whatever, but Jermaine Defoe's kept himself in shape and he's still got the touch. You know, that'll never lose. That'll ne He'll never lose that and that'll never um, go from him. But his, his first, the first goal yesterday was just lovely. Where he just dinks it, that, that little subtle chip as the goalie comes towards him. So, you know, a wee flash and a wee, a, a nice wee kind of romantic memory from from what he did bring when he was here but no listen it's, it's a great thing for all these guys to come and um and, and to play and put on that kind of performance um you know it, it's, it's it's great for the fans the youngsters lots of kids there yesterday and everything else so you know a great day out for everyone um disappointed that i missed it such as um work commitments and things like that but it's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, but it's great to see, uh, you know, like Alex McQueen's back and stuff like that. Yeah. Proper legend um, as a manager. And, you know, a lot of really good faces. Robin Van Persie and stuff like that. Genuine world-class players turning up to play. So, yeah, you know, great day out had by everyone there, I'm sure. Um, and just, you know, it's, a, it's one of these things. It's a great thing to have. Um you know, yeah. an enjoyable thing for everybody. Yeah, I think Derek, though, I think we were quite harshly done. You know, there's an offside goal to win it. I'm not sure. Like, do we not? Do we do interviews and complain about these things and demand VAR? I'm not <laughs> quite sure how it works, but um, yeah. Um, all joking aside, it was a great, um, a great thing for everyone. I know Graham Clark, Boydie, and the guys at Five Star put on 
um, a great show and, and worked really hard to organise it all. So well done to them, and you know I hope everyone that attended had a great time. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on Alex McLeish shortly because he was speaking about uh, Michael Beale. Um, but a few comments coming in with regards to that. This is an interesting one from Kev Stevie. Uh, if you could sign one player from each legend squad in their prime, uh, who are you taking? Um, that's, a, that's a tough one, isn't it? Who, who are you taking of uh, the, the Rangers side, first of all? Probably a name that springs to mind straight away um, is Ronald De Boer. Yeah, I was thinking um, that. You know, Ronald, when he was when he was part of the, the 50th title under McLeish, was incredible. Alex just seemed to manage to get the best out of him because when he came under Advocate, he was suffering with injuries quite a bit, but um, McLeish managed to get a year out of him where he was just incredible. Him, Ferguson, Narval, Adzi, Lovinkranz, Moles, they all pitched in with 15, 16 goals each. There was nobody that ran away with it that season, but um, Alex played, you know, 4-2-4, four, four, and it was quite adventurous, and, and Ronald was was just key to everything that year. Um, incredibly good footballer, incredibly good footballer. So, um, yeah, probably Ronald De Boer from yeah. uh, the, the Rangers side of it is the one that springs springs to mind for the legends i don't know i mean yap stam is was incredible yeah, center there. back you know incredibly good player jack wilshire you know you see even like guys like that yesterday like jack wilshire robin van Persie, they've still got it robin van Persie still got the eye for the pass everything else i mean van Persie at his height you know arsenal was incredible then he went to manchester united and took it up a level so um you know, his volley to, to win the league and stuff like that. Just incredible players. So yeah. it'd be difficult to see past the, the kind of headliners, but um Ron De Boer, maybe Yapstam. Yeah. Maybe Yapstam. Because Yapstam at that time, um PSV and then Man United was was one of the best in the world. So between him and Robin Van Persie, I think. Yeah, of course, it was a fallout between him and, and Sir Alex that saw him leave. But I remember at the time Rangers bought uh, Newman from PSV and Stam was uh, rumoured as well at the time, but Man United were able to, to bring him in. And uh, yeah, he was an absolute unit as a defender, uh, top, top player. Yeah, I sort of agree with you with that. And uh, lots of comments coming in. Billy Scott says we should sign Boa Morty. He's still got it. He called a, a screamer at the weekend. Uh, and Stephen Smith says a, a charity uh, is the big winner. Big winner. Uh, you've got a nice comment here, uh, Stevie. Stevino Cadinho says, I really like listening to Stevie. I feel he's always fair and balanced in his opinions on club and player issues. So there you go. Nice wee bit of praise there uh, on a Monday morning. Um, I appreciate I'll... that. That's What's nice, that? in, in brackets, grumpy. Is very <laughs> Probably filtered out. But now, nah, listen, that's a nice call. I just try and, Derek, we just, me and you, we're fans. Like, we just try and mm. discuss, don't we? And can I say it how it is? Sometimes it's a bit rough and unedited and a bit, you know, kind of, rougher than maybe others would put it but we're just supporters of the club so that's what we do isn't it so but i appreciate that it's nice i mean i'll need to send davino a wee five or like and <laughs> say thanks very much for that uh yeah nice comments always welcomed um you touched on alex mcleish uh there stevie um he was speaking as well at the game good to see alex back at ibrooks always is uh is, is very well thought of um and he was talking about uh michael beale he says he's come in and definitely got the backing of the players they love working with him hopefully they can get to a level where the competition in the league is tighter than it is at the moment i met michael at a dinner a few weeks ago he's a nice guy has good ideas and he only wants the best for Rangers. In terms of advice, Sir Alex Ferguson's voice always rings in my ears when someone asks that. His advice was always play with tempo. That's something Michael tries to do anyway. Uh, that The Scottish Cup is what uh, we've got left, and it's imperative. I know a few of my pals over the last few years have said they don't bother with the Cups. They just want to win the league. I get that, but this Scottish Cup is hell of important. Uh, they always have been in my eyes. It would be a big boost uh, for the club uh, if Michael can go on and lift it. Uh, and a wee bit... But a similarity with, with, with Beal and, and Alex McLeish when he came in a, a little bit, Stevie taking over from Dick, Dick Advocate, he won, uh, he won the, the, the two cups, didn't he? In his, his first season, uh, and it sort of it, t it turned the tide, uh, what have you. And then Rangers won the treble the following season. So, I mean, a Scottish Cup victory. I know they're looking to retain the trophy, but it could be huge for Beal in terms of trying to just turn that tide at the moment. I mean, the league form is probably title winning league form that Rangers are, are, are on at the moment. It just, uh, unfortunately, the damage was done before Beale uh, arrived at the club. But the Scottish Cup, as Alex says, it's, it's absolutely huge for Rangers. Yeah, it's interesting, Derek, because this actually ties in with um, 
by weekly article this week. I've actually Joshua's already got it. Um, I wrote it over the weekend, and it was about Michael Beal and how um, how well he's done. But ironically, you know, for as well as he's done in the league, the, the big one was the League Cup final. We didn't perform. So now he's heading into what I consider the biggest challenge in his in his Rangers uh, managerial career so far. He is about to embark on three old firms. He's he's you know he's got Aberdeen away this um, next month as well within the next four league games. So he's went on a really good league run. All of a sudden he faces Parkhead and Pataudry. Then he's got Hamden in the semi final, and he has to break that kind of run of old firm games, and he has to turn that around somewhere. We need it to be the Scottish Cup, and then we probably need to win the one at Ibrox as well, just to just to put on notice. Um, you know, Celtic have done incredibly well. Their consistency is unbelievable. They are a good side. They they, they play really well. They're, they're fit and they press well. So I, I've never been one to sit and, and kind of say it's it's lucky or whatever. I think we need to recognise that. But we need to get close to them and we yeah. need to start properly challenging. So Michael Beale all of a sudden, for as well as he has done, I think, what, 16 wins out of 17 in the league, um, eight away wins, you know, everything's been great and it's no criticism of him. Um, not not in the slightest. He's done nearly everything. And we you asked me last week how I would rate his performance, and I said ten, and I think that's honestly fair. But he's about to embark Derek on 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 a critical period because not only has he got the on field stuff, he's got to sort everything that's going on off it. So when you think about the contract situations currently, there's I think eight of them going out of contract. Then he needs to deal with the likes of Malik Tillman. He needs to figure out what's happening with him. Then we need to figure out, um, he says he wants five in, but what happens if Kent and Morelos go as well? Would that be six, seven then? Um, Ryan Jack, what's the situation with him? And then he's got to figure out all the players that are going out of contract next summer. Your likes of Barisic, your likes of Lundstrom. Um, you know, there's question marks over the goalkeeping department as a whole. So does John McGoughlin go in the summer as well? Because he's only got a year left kind of thing. So there's a lot There's a lot of work for Michael Beale to, be, to do. Um, and then you look at the club as a whole. What's the position in the boardroom? You know, are we going to get a chairman change in the summer? Are we going to get some change in there? Director of football. There's so many questions over the club at this moment in time, and we're heading into a vital period, not only for Michael Beale but for the club as a whole. But we need to sort things like the medical department, the scout department. There's there's so much work to be done. And Michael Beale needs to oversee all that. And not only does he need to oversee all that, Derek, he needs to keep winning. Yeah. So, um, you know, we talk about the Rangers job being the biggest, and and we like to say that because we're all supporters of the club and things, but he's got some task over the next couple of months, Derek. And, and the issue he's got is if it doesn't go right, then we, you know how we'll react as supporters. And if it goes right, he needs to still make sure that it doesn't swing his opinion away from the big work that needs to be done. So it's such a, a huge predicament for him, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does. And for what it's worth, Derek, I trust him 100%. I really am. Um, you know, everybody knows I'm a big fan of Michael Beale. So I just think he's got the eye for the player. And, and I also think that he's got the gravitas and the and the respect of everybody within Rangers to make the changes that's it that's necessary. Spoke a lot about Stephen Gerrard having the the um kind of um standing and, and respect of everybody within Ibrox. Well Michael Beale's just the same. So hopefully they they allow him to lead and, and oversee what's got to be a, a really big summer and yeah. a really, really big end to the season. Yeah, the comments over the weekend were interesting. You touched on transfers, Stevie. Um, Michael Beale says, I've identified some really good players for the club. The club is away working on that. So uh, I think that, that's encouraging. He, he knows what he wants. You mentioned their five players, Stevie. Um, and I think it's essential that Rangers do bring in uh, those players, his targets that, that he's identified. Um, of course, it's a long way between now and the summer and bringing those guys in. But I think he's, it's clear that, that Michael Beale, and I think he said it himself, the team will look very different at the start of next season. Is that is that encouraging for you as, as, as a fan, hearing that from the manager, that it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of change coming our way in, uh, come the summertime? Yeah, absolutely. And and I'll, and I'll be as honest 
as I can be with this. As long as he's leading it, Derek, as long as he's identifying the players and Ross Wilson is nowhere near that, then I'll be quite happy. I'm more than happy for Ross Wilson to, to be in the background and be the ones um, doing the deals and, and manoeuvring people out. Because let's be honest, he seems to be okay at that. He seems to be okay at offloading players and getting decent fees and stuff like that. So if Michael Beale's leading it um, alongside John Park and the others um, in the scouting that are there, then I'm quite happy with that. So Michael Beale's quite subtle. He's got a way of, of kind of putting it all back on the club a wee bit. And mm. I've got no doubt he's identified the players that we we need and we need to go and get. So, And it's actually interesting listening to him, the way he talks about if he wants five in as his base, that's before you even put anybody else out. It's going to be... Yeah going to be quite a good summer if we can get the likes of Rask and Cantwell, that youthful enthusiasm, boys that are able to play with tempo and stuff, it's going to be good. But these five, they need to be correct, Derek. You're looking at, if you listen to what he's already said, he wants a goalkeeper, he wants a nine, he wants yeah. a centre-back. So you're either two, what are you thinking, maybe a midfielder, maybe another forward-type winger. And then if Kent goes, he's already made that clear in the same interview that he's going to replace anybody that does go, does that mean further down the line in the squad, if we're getting rid of the likes of Holanda, um, you know, Arfield, etc., on contracts, are we replacing them, or does he just mean from his first team area, because he talked about maybe having 22, 23, 24 as a squad, so um, he definitely, it's definitely an interesting um, article, I didn't take too much out of it, I've got to be honest, in terms of like, I like reading them and it is interesting, it does excite me, but at the same time, a lot of it is just, you know, where we are, kind yeah. of comments, and I expect that of him. Um, I'm interested to see more about what the club are going to do. You know, it's all right, Michael Beale speaking quite a lot, and we do hear from him, obviously, from pressers and things. And I should say, folks, as well, this isn't a new interview from Michael Beale. This was from last week's press conference, and what mm -hmm. what what press do is they just hold it back so that they've got content yeah, yeah. over, you know, Michael Beale um, and the players were, were afforded, I think maybe three, four days off in this break. So they've been enjoying that. So that isn't, isn't a brand new interview as such. So he hasn't been speaking to the media during the break. Um, but I'm interested to hear, I'd really like to hear more from Rangers about what's going to happen in the summer and, and what changes they're going to make. There's a lot of pressure we know at the moment on Stuart Robertson and on um, Ross Wilson from the support. So there's also, you know, interested to see what's going to happen with the chairman dynamic, uh, the boardroom dynamic as well. Are we going to get a wee shuffle about and things like that? That all needs to be made clear. It's also coming up to season ticket renewal time, Derek. So that leadership needs to come, but it also needs to come not only on, on renewal time, there needs to be more dynamic and more, conversations coming from the club and more leadership as well so I'm not going to say we're at a crossroads we're definitely at um at a moment where I think the club can be you know leading the way a bit more interesting um lots of comments coming in with regards to uh possible recruitment in the summertime you touched on Tillman but uh, of course uh, uh something that might affect it, um, that Maka gets in touch read yesterday that Tuchel may take Tillman back pre-season. What do you think, lads? Of course, Julian Nagelsmann was given the bullet from Bayern Munich and Thomas Tuchel has been appointed. Uh, and Caroline also echoes that point. Uh, will the change in manager at Bayern affect the Tillman signing? Um, are you, is, is that a concern for you if, if that, that, that could affect things going forward? A new manager at, at the helmet Bayern Munich there, Stevie? No. No. Quite comfortable with that? Nah, yeah. Russian. Is what it is. I'm not a fan of um, Thomas Tuchel um, for my own reasons, but um, he's he's not really a huge fan of youth either, Thomas Tuchel. So I'm not really concerned. My only concern about Malik Tillman is if him himself wants to stay. It's up to him. Yeah. So you know we can create an environment for him and give him the opportunities which we have. It's really up to him. Um, Rangers have you know an agreed price. We have the option to pull that trigger whenever we like. So it's, it's really up to Malik what he does. That's the only concern for me. If if Malik Tillman wants to come to Rangers, then it will happen because Rangers will then get it done however they, they choose to do that. you know. Um, but if he decides he's not, then 
you know, I, I don't think it's going to be because Bayern Munich said no, we yeah. want to keep him. I don't really think that's that's a thing. I think it's going to be all on him deciding where he is. So, no, I'm a concerned about Bayern Munich. I'm a concerned about Thomas Tuchel. No, as I said to you at the start of this, Tuchel doesn't fa- um, he doesn't really favour youth that much. He certainly didn't in his time at Chelsea. He put quite a lot of youth out. So, um, I'm not concerned in the slightest, really, um, about him going back there. Malik, it'll take care of itself. Just enjoy him, I think, for the last. But there's also Derek. I've, t- I've spoken about this before on Malik Tillman. Malik Tillman still owes Rangers a wee bit. You know, he's on, on these big games, semi-final at Hamden, yep. that old firm games and things. You know, we're still looking for that big performance from Malik Tillman. So he's got a wee bit to go as well before we are, you know, all jumping through, um, you know, jumping through the, all the... Um, hoops to, to get him signed and get him done. So a lot of work there on both sides to be done. But I'm not like I'm not concerned. I'm not look, Derek. I'm, you know when people talk about Manelos and talk about Kent and talk about the summer and that, I, I don't worry about these things. You know maybe it's long in the tooth and having you know done this for so long and you know I'm going into kind of my 30th summer I remember now support Rangers and, and worrying about all this kind of stuff and it, it doesn't anymore it doesn't bother me if Ryan Kent wants to stay at Rangers he'll stay if mm-hmm. Alfredo Morelos wants to stay at Rangers he'll stay and if they move on we'll just get somebody else you know it's it's bigger better players have left in the past bigger and better players will leave in the future Malik Tillman Ryan Kent Alfredo Morelos if they want to stay they'll stay yeah. So would I like them to stay? Absolutely, of course I would. I'm not going to be naive in saying that. And if they go, I'll, they'll go and we wish them all the best. But I'm not going to worry about guys staying or what might happen. You know, Michael Beale's got a plan, fully trust in that. And um, it may or may not include these guys. He'll know. By this point, he'll know exactly what's happening. So, you know, let him get on with it and, and what will be will be. Yeah, uh, yeah, very interesting uh, indeed. Um, uh, just a, a couple of more things before we wrap up, Stevie. Um, of course, it wasn't the only Legends game at the weekend. A bit of, a, a, a bit of noise around about a, a certain game at Anfield and, and Stephen Gerrard's celebration. I'm not too sure if you've seen it, but, but what did you make of that? Um, <laughs> uh, he was getting pelted by, uh, what was it, drinks cups and what have you after scoring a penalty for Liverpool. Certainly milked it, did uh, uh, Stephen Gerrard, but um, did, you, did, you, did you catch that at all? Ah, I mean, I've seen it. <laughs> seen it, and um, you'll probably get the same. You'll probably get the answer you thoroughly expect of me, Derek. And that <laughs> is that. Look, it's a bit of banter. Yeah, they don't like us. We don't like them. We're rivals. That's the way it is. If Steven Gerrard played for Celtic, and it was the same, and he celebrated in front of the the Rangers fans like that, we would have done the exact same. So I'm not going to sit here in the moral high ground and give it big licks or whatever. You know. It was a bit of banter for five minutes, and for five minutes it was funny. I quite enjoyed it, but that's it. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of of kind of things said and done, and you know, a, a lot of kind of mental articles and everything else that have went out from a certain side, and just you know, see for me, it's a bit of banter. If you're going to sit and give somebody so much stick, be prepared to give it back. So or or take a wee bit back, and that's it. That's the end of it. Um, Stephen Gerrard is always will be a big part of our history, but I don't maybe buy into the romantic side of, of him the way others do. Um, he came, he done well, he left at his first opportunity. Thanks very much, but I, I don't romanticise over it the way others do, yeah. maybe. I don't know, but um, you know, I appreciate everything he done in his time here. And as I said, it was all well and good on Saturday and we would have done the same thing. So yeah, that's it really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, folks, before we wrap up, just to, to uh, direct you to the website, there's a great uh, interview on there uh, Josh has done with uh, Todd Cantwell's uh, coach at Norwich City uh, when he was coming through the ranks there. Um, I'd, I'd recommend you go and have a read at that. There's also an interview from uh, Ian King on Craig Moore that you can find on the website also and a few other bits and pieces uh, you'll find on there uh, throughout the day. Stevie mentioned earlier on his piece, uh, I'll be in uh, on the website uh, a little later uh, this week uh, as well. So keep your eyes peeled uh, for that as we uh, hone in on the return to domestic action. Uh, I'm not a fan of these international breaks, Stevie, I've got to admit. I'm not sure if you're the same. 
I mean, <laughs> I, I need to be careful, Derek. Um, does international football bother me? Nah, it doesn't. Not mm. really. Um, you know, the kids like it, and you know, the wife took the kids to the game and all that on Saturday, but not for me, Derek. Um, obviously, yeah. I'd like see the young fella do well for Scotland and stuff like that, but yeah. Aside of that, am I really bothered? I really like Steve Clark and stuff. Nah, I can't say I do. Um, I, I like to see them do all right, I suppose. But no, nah, it doesn't grab me the way in and Rangers no. does look. Um, I'll, I'll look forward to our, our kind of um, guys getting back in it on Saturday and then the build up to what is going to be a, a huge month ahead for the club. Um, some big away games in there in the league. You want to keep that league form going, you know, and then you've got to do the the Scottish Cup, so I'm glad um, uh, I'm glad that, uh, t- to have our game back at the weekend, and obviously yeah, back at Ibrox on Saturday Derek, so that should be should be good fun, and uh, we'll look forward to that but no, I'm a huge fan of it, it's nice to get a wee bit of a rest, I suppose, from Rangers for a wee bit but just... Yeah, I'm always ready for it to return, I've got to say Yeah, I've got, um, aye, that's yeah. it, that's the best way to describe it man. You're always yeah. putting, Derek you all, like, <laughs> you always put me on the spot like, how can we How can we get Stevie to react to that, let's just throw in a Ricky, Bo- Ricky Foster or a Scotland national team question that, because we know how he'll react so, um, you know Derek knows what I'm like everybody, because he sat you know, out in, in uh, Naples and we, we've sat, or wherever we've sat having a few drinks and that, so he knows how to push yeah. my buttons. So um let's ask Stevie about the Scotland national team and, <laughs> and see what he says. So I uh, thanks for that, mate. <laughs> it's all it's all good fun there, as always. Uh, but a big thanks to Stevie as ever. Um great to have you on, Stevie. Uh, and we'll speak to you again uh, next week. And, and a big thanks to everyone uh, for interacting with the show as ever. Um uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. Thanks my ship myself and, and Joshua on tomorrow uh, as we begin to look ahead to that game on Saturday. But until then, enjoy the rest 